And joining us for this week's Your Health segment is Dr. Eugenio Rocksmith, Assistant Professor of Neurology at the University of Maryland School of Medicine and a neurologist at the University of Maryland Rehabilitation and Orthopedic Institute. Doctor, thank you for being with us. Thank you. There's been some new research into sports-related, really football-related uh, brain injuries. What's been learned? Well, in, uh, in July of this year, an article came out in uh, the uh, journal JAMA, Journal of the American Medical Association, which is a very well-respected journal. And they basically looked at uh, pathological samples of the brains of 202 football players. The majority of the brains had been donated by, by uh, professional football players, but there were also brains from people who had played football in college, uh, in the Canadian Football League, semi-pro, even some high school and pre-high school. And they, they identified something called CTE. Yes, it's an. Uh, the the name of the, of the disorder is called chronic traumatic encephalopathy, and in this study, which of course is a study based on or done on brains that have been donated by players who have died, and their families have donated the brains to this institute, and they did a mi microscopic study of the brains, and they found that there were certain abnormalities that were very common in the brains of these football players, especially the longer they played, the more likely they were to have these abnormalities called tau. And an accumulation of these abnormalities in different parts of the brain resulted in certain symptoms that could be, that could be diagnosed as this chronic traumatic encephalopathy. But what would it do to someone while they were living? What, what symptoms would you well, expect? While they're living, it can cause many, many different behavioral problems and cognitive problems. Behavioral like, for example, explosive anger or anxiety or f even physical and verbal abuse, people losing their temper very easily. Uh, it can also, the more, the more serious symptoms can cause memory problems, prob cognitive problems in general, and some players even went on to have motor problems in, in walking very slowly or very slow movements or problems with maintaining balance while they're walking. If, if you post-mortem examine the brains of a bunch of people who were not football players, would you see any cases of, of CTE? You probably would because throughout a person's lifetime they have taken you know a few or even maybe more hits to the head and that may cause some very, very minuscule uh, damage on pathologic examination. But, the, but what's significant about CTE is that with these football players, they have repeatedly taken blows to their bodies and especially to their heads, affecting their brains. And it's the accumulation of those blows over time that eventually leads, leads to this, this degeneration of the brain. How does it relate to concussions? Are they the, the, the type of, of forceful injury that can cumulatively cause CTE, does it necessarily cause somebody to have a concussion and have symptoms immediately afterwards? Well, you can have symptoms. A lot, very often, uh, football players will talk about how they took a hit on the field and they, they were a little, a little groggy after the, the hit and they would go sit down for a while and just kind of shake it off and then try to go back in to play the game. And that's specifically why there have been these guidelines that have come around about return to play after taking a hit in football. And so these players may have very transient symptoms of memory problems or behavioral problems that may last for a few hours to a few days to some even a few weeks. For example, I, in my brain injury clinic at University of Maryland Rehab and Orthopedic Institute, I very frequently see concussion patients and they've, they've sustained concussions from many different causes, also from, from playing sports. Let me uh, remind our viewers, if you have a question about uh, brain injuries from sports or otherwise, give us a call. We'll have the number up on the screen. You can also tweet your questions to at MPT News. Um, so what is the treatment? What, what's available? There really is no treatment for chronic traumatic encephalopathy or CTE. The best treatment is just prevention. Prevention in the sense that you know, you have to make a really conscious decision as a parent as to when you're going to allow your child to play football if that's what they want to do. Uh, conscious decision as to how intense the level of play you want your child to be involved in because this is something that really starts, it can start in early childhood depending on when the child starts to play football and as they progressively pay, uh, grow up and play more and more games, 
and the intensity rises, that accumulation of the of these tau abnormal tau proteins becomes more significant and eventually will lead to symptoms down the road in their in their later lives. What, what would you advise a, a parent on, on the question of if uh, they're inclined to have somebody in a contact sport like football, when would they start? And second part, uh, soccer, heading the ball, and, and even without heading the ball, there are sometimes violent collisions. Soccer is another is another sport, and even though it's technically, even though by definition it's not supposed to be a contact sport, there's no way that you can avoid not colliding with other players. I played soccer when I was in high school, and that was very common. So yes, that that is another type of sport where you can have a significant injury to the brain, especially if uh, the players are involved in heading the ball. That's that's a big issue. But as far as uh, football is concerned, I think the jury is still out on when is the appropriate time to, when it's safer to allow your child to play football. Uh, we still need to do a lot more research as to how this, this disease process begins, because we have to keep in mind that this study that, that was uh, mentioned, or that was uh, displayed in JAMA, had to do with players who, who had already, or former players who had already started showing symptoms that were somewhat unusual, and their, their families were concerned about it. So after the players died, their brains were donated to to uh, to this pool of brains, but the the thing is that you have to remember is that there's somewhat of a bias in that those those brains were already from players who are starting to show symptoms, so they're more likely to have CTE. Let's take a phone call, St. Mary's County. This is Marilyn. Marilyn, thank you for calling. Go ahead. Yes, doesn't have the same protein that's in Alzheimer's brains. In in Alzheimer's. Yes, isn't it? yes that's, one, that's one of the abnormalities that you can find in people who have Alzheimer's, yes. I find myself, uh, I watched a fair amount of football this weekend, and, and you start to feel guilty about it. Uh, and, and certainly, I mean, it's huge money, you know, the TV, the, uh, the, the, the ratings, and, and the other revenue streams that they have. So there's a lot of money riding on making it safer. Is there a safer helmet? I've seen some reports recently, in fact, about making the, the outer shell a little bit flexible, trying to reduce the, the torsional right. forces as well. Right. There, there, uh, one helmet that I'm, that I'm aware of is called the Vicis. It's V-I-C-I-S, and it's zero, the name of the helmet is a zero-one helmet. And basically, it has an outer shell that's kind of like the crumple zone on the bumper of a, of a car. The greater the impact, the more the outer shell will deform to, to absorb the impact. It also has an inner lining that helps to disperse the force that has been directed at that particular spot, disperse it omnidirectionally everywhere around the brain or everywhere around the head so that there's no one area where that takes a significant uh, amount of force. Let's squeeze in one more call. Prince George's County, this is Charles. Charles, go ahead. How are you guys doing? Good, thanks for the call. Yeah, here's the question I have for the doc. It um, doesn't have to do with sports, but when I was younger, I'd had encephalitis when I was around two, and it had paralyzed me from the neck down, but I can walk now. I was wondering if um, having, having that kind of uh, brain problem, if that would cause me problems later on in life, and I wouldn't be over the television. Thank well, you. Well, get you an answer. Best of luck. Thank you. Off topic, but what do you think? I, I do think that... Uh, Anytime you have any type of, of insult to the brain, whether, whether it be traumatic or infectious, as in his case, th there, is some, there is some lasting damage that, that, uh, that will, will persist throughout the person's life. Now, in his particular case, once the disease process has been arrested, it, uh, there should be some recovery after that. But in the case of chronic traumatic encephalopathy, these, this, this type of damage just continues to progressively worsen and worsen and the patient's symptoms worsen. I just have a couple seconds. If yes. somebody's out there, they have maybe a student playing football, have some uh, symptoms, who do they see? Primary care or to a specialist neurologist? You, usually, the patient, usually the players will, will see their primary care physician first. And then the primary care physician should refer the, 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 the student Doctor, to Doctor, we have to leave it there. We're out of time. Thanks so much. Your health segments are a co-production of Maryland Public Television and the University of Maryland Medical System.